will read from uh, 8 to 11. verse 8 to verse 11. Can I read for you? And again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms and of the world and the glory. Can you see the verse there? And he said to him, these things all together or all taken together I will give you if you will prostrate yourself before me and do homage and worship me. You see the verse there? Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it has been written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil departed from him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Let's pray, Father. Thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship belongs to God. If you can see that verse 10 there, it says, He told Satan, Satan, go away. Here, in the issue of worship, we don't negotiate. It's God who created heaven and earth. Alone. Who must be when Jesus said, Go away. The Bible says, when he said, go away, God must be worshipped only. Satan could not have any opportunity to stand. The Bible says, he went away and angels came. It is only worship that can make Satan to run away. It is only worship that can make Satan to run away. And the Bible says, when Satan went away, angels came, angels came and worshipped him. Can you see the verse there? Amen. Angels came and minister to him. Tell me, my friend, for Mokose. angels to come and minister to you, you must worship. Tell the person again, you must worship. If you are a worshiper, you are inviting God to come to you. Because already there is nothing on earth which is equals to you Ye, worshiping God. If you just say, I'm worshiping my God. You say, God, you created me. And you created everything on earth. Okay, let's take example. If Jesus might have said, Okay, I worship you. You know what he was saying? He was saying, my position of existence were created by you, Satan. Even the kingdoms you are giving me. So you can see here, if really Jesus Jesus had done Jesus was supposed to have rebelled against God. This was a dangerous trick from Satan. Here, here Satan shows that he is intelligent. 
Sometimes Satan is also doing that to us. Na kocha dingwe Satan liri na wari dira diloche. He said, "Can you see? I'll give you this." Aru ya bona kito ufache. But as long as you just wash it. Mara as long as wena kano tumi chafela jeka muka. Look at your life. Nothing is happening. Level up pila una leka ntoro ya ubona ala. So God is not doing anything. No no muti mwa how how do you listen? You can still come to God on the other side. Wena ukano kiti mwa chafela muti mungu kan tingi la yomwe. But you need one two three. God is not providing. Mara utoka ntoro ya li ya li. Mara muti mwa ufiona. Hallelujah. Amen. If you can see that if Jesus might have agreed. Ha je song ka ba do meji na koyela. It was over with. Ne utaba u fedile ka rena. Because automatically Jesus was sent to us. Ka bane botse botse Jesus na ite mo rena. Ore a ta mo le fasina to re plus. The mission was finished. Mere ko wa ga ora ore ne utaba u fedile tsa chilo na leo. Jesus and us we were under such. Jesus le rena ne re taba re le ka tasi ya diabolo. So worship. So to me sho. Declare the one who is worshiped. Ibonja yo atumishwa to be the creator Ibulela yo atumishwa ngurabe mupi who created everything and the one who's worshiping Yo abupile ndilo cheka ufela liye na ya atumishwa I'm sure you're hearing that Ya dumela le yangwa If you worship God you are say you are the one who created How atumishwa mutimo re mutimo we wena ke wena ya nhlotseng Therefore all things Ora o re ge dilo cheka mokatidingwa also belongs to you Li wena ke tsa gago I don't know if you are hearing that. I can't say it again. So worship is important. So what do we show over to God? Okay, look at this second verse. Are you ready? Verse here, Bobby D. In John four, verse twenty-two. John four, twenty-two. You see Jesus. Are you born again? So he was chased away before by this Samaritan woman. Come, Mr. Diwa, Mr. Maria. And then she said, "Are this woman said." Mosadio are You know you must know that we our fathers worship in that mountain Si ba ge hore bo papa re nai na ba ile ba tumisha modimo thabeng ye This woman was trying Mosadio na lika to push Jesus away O pushela Jesu ka thuko to say Jesus the character I'm having Ore Jesu we thao ye nna ke nang le yona megwa was created by where I worship E dirilwe ka monna ke tumisha ngteng The woman was right. Mosadio na bolela tsona. That's why Jesus says true worship. Ke kala ba kala Jesu are ba tumisha modimo ba nnete. Shall worship in spirit and in truth. Ba tumisha ka moya le ka urereisha. In verse 22. Mola o verse 22 yona ire. Jesus says we know. Jesu re la re atsiba. What we worship. Se re se rapelao. So that is why you people you don't know. Re na ina le tsibi. That's why you are living the way you are. Ke kala ba kala le phela ka mogo le phelao. Listen to this. Cheletsa. Your character. Me hwa ya lena. Announce you. E bulela wena that you are worshiping God who fails. O re wena o rapela o ba utumisha modimo wa o palela ha wena me hweng o paletswe. Jesus here could not deny. Jesu mo ha ha nature. He said, "We know what we worship." You don't know. That is why your character is changing. If you want us to give you this water, change the character. Go back where the root cause of your problem is. Jesus sent the woman. And say, go Ari. and call your husband. Samaya yo bitsa monna ha o ke tsa ka o shufa tsa ka ona metsia. And she says, I don't have the husband. Jesus said, you are right. Jesu are na ke na monna, Jesu are bolela tsona. Jesus was denouncing. Jesu na boncha. The situation that si this woman was portraying. Se mosadi ona se boncha. In the beginning when Matumbo. she said, we worship God, our fathers. And Jesus will say, true. But there will be true worshippers that will worship God in spirit and in truth. So always their character will be affected by where they are. That's about my friend. If you worship God in spirit and in truth, you will be a Christian wherever you are. You won't be a Christian sometimes. You will be a Christian always. Hallelujah. Amen. In Matthew 14, verse 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 14,
Are you there? Later thing. 26 to Yes, let's start there. From 26. What verse 26? And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they screamed out with fright. But instantly he spoke to them saying, take courage. Um, I am. Stop being afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and he came towards Jesus. Amen. But when he perceived and felt the strong wind, he was afraid. He was frightened and he's beginning to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. I mean, from death. In his instantly, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and held him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Amen. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Can you see that? Amen. And those in the boat knelt and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. If you can see that, you realize the reason why they worship. I mean, even now, these are the miracles that has not have ever happened and that will never happen. The first miracle that has happened there, when Jesus approached walking on the water, which no one can do that. Only God can do that. Because he's is the one who created that water. When he was walking on the water, the disciples perceived this is a ghost. But look here, that is the first thing of showing that God is the only one to be worshipped. The reason why they worship, they saw three things. The first one is when Jesus walked on top of that water. The second one is when Peter was made to walk on top of water and when he sings, Still, he was lifted up a to walk on the walk. You know, if it was you and me, if Peter we will leave him to sink. Just say, you no, know, it's because his faith has failed. Jesus was tested there as a Messiah who saves. Because the Bible says when Peter saw the wind blowing, now, he doubts and he began to sink and he cried that he will die in the water. But this is the second thing that Jesus did. He lifted up Peter and Peter was able to stand also in the water and able also to walk back to the boat. If Jesus didn't do that, Jesus could save himself. Jesus didn't do that, Jesus could save Jesus could save himself. But he could not save others. So that one Jesus shows that so he is still Messiah of Messia God that must be worshipped. So that's why he lifted up the man and the man began to walk and he entered there. The third thing was when the wind ceases. I just remember that the disciple says, who is he? Who's, what kind of man is he? That even the winds can hear his voice. That he can just say, hey. And everything was still. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus must be worshipped as God. My friend. If you see how we know who can God do this, worship him. If you can see how who can do this, you know, apostles can do miracles. Prophets can prophesy. 
not walking in the water. I'm not talking about rising from the dead. I'm talking about walking on top Magicians can plan. plan. They can plan to walk on and try to make it like it's real. And they walk like it's real. Whereas they know what they've done there. But if you can enter there, they won't save you. So Jesus walk on top of the water and the one he called to walk when he was he lifted him up. You know, I mean, just reason with me. Do you know that you need more energy and wait to lift someone up? Can you think about Jesus lifting Peter up, standing on top of the water? What kind of the energy and weight he was carrying that can, can I show you something? Come here, come here. This man is sinking. Come. Like this. Just do like this. When he's sinking, I need more strength, more weight to carry him up. I must stand on the Here Jesus was tested if he's not standing on something. That is why, okay, thank you. That is why the disciples That's why Baruti knelt down and worshipped You understand what I'm trying to say? That's why my friend. Worship God only. He can save you. He will take you where he can't save you. Tell your neighbor, he won't take you where he can't save you. He will never allow you to die where you are. I can't hear you. Where you are, he knows where you are. He can save you from there. His worth to be worshipped. In Matthew 2, 2, from 7 to 11, we see the people here, the astrologers, in Matthew 2, 7 to 11, the astrologers, they saw a star of a king that was born in Judea. And they followed the star. And the Bible says when they reached there, that star took them to the king. Herod. When they reached to Herod, they announced the king was born. They found that Herod doesn't have a child that was born. This is trouble Herod. And Herod, maybe if he was having a small child, Herod would say, yes, 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 yes. yes. I've got a child called Uhu yes. yes. So they were supposed to have worshipped him. Unfortunately, they didn't have the child. There. So so because even Herod himself, he was supposed to know that there's a child that was born. So in other words, the perspective of the line of the mind of Herod was needed so that even Herod must worship. But if you can see, Herod, he spoke something. He said, okay, when you find him, as you didn't find him yet, tell so that I will come and worship. And the Bible says, the astrologers went away, the star moved to where the child when they reached there, they saw a child. And the Bible says they worship. They worship. They knew this one is the king. And they worship the king. They knew this one is God. They, they worship. The moment they worship them, you know, they went away. After they worship, 
And after they gave everything, they got a revelation. And the revelation was, don't go back to Herod. He is the enemy. Listen to this. As Christians, when we are worshipping, and when we are giving, we need to know our enemy and expose our enemies. Worship, expose your enemies. Worship, render your enemy zero. That's one of my friends. There is power in worship. Worship exposes your enemy. This year you must know your enemy. The plan of the enemy. Listen, the, the Bible says the revelation was found. When they found the revelation, don't use the same rule. Don't go back there. That one wants to kill the king. So the one who you are, you are going back to want to kill the one you are worshiping. So therefore it is your enemy. So don't go back there. I'm here to tell you today when you worship your enemy will be exposed. You will be rendered zero. Hallelujah. Amen. It reminded me by the time when the Israelites were approaching Jericho, Joshua says, no, there's no noise. You, need, you, don't need to, you need to keep quiet and you just turn around. When they were turning around, they were gathering their noises, their voices. They were gathering their strength. But the last days, they began to shout. They might have, have said, God, you are alive! You are faithful! This is the last day! And the walls went down. Nobody inside survived. Whoever might have hit himself, he died there. Today when you scream and praise the living God and worship, there is no hidden enemy that will survive. I'm here to tell you, you can kill your enemy by worshiping God. Because you you bring him here. You remember what happened when yeah, Sal Paul and Silas were worshiping in prison? The chains the went down. What happened to the what man who was guarding them? What happened? He was afraid. He wanted to kill himself. Worship can kill the enemy. I remember when we were starting this church. Me and Mama we used to sing a song. That says, you know the song. We began to find our neighbor. Changing the song. We realized it's the enemy. She began to sing. Are you hearing that? Your enemy can be exposed today. Expose your enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. You can worship God with all your heart and you don't look back. You can worship God when you're not looking at your situation. You know, listen, when you are busy worshiping, you expose that enemy, the enemy you will hear the enemy talking just to discourage you, just to make you tired. Don't be tired. Carry on. Because where you are going is closer than before. Don't look at what you are happening. I'm a good one away there. When we are singing, I'm a away there. But we are not looking at my good one. We are looking at the living God. There are some people who are here when you are busy worshiping, you are looking at the answer. But your enemy is looking at your problem. Don't look at your problem. Look unto Jehovah Nisi. 
Jehovah Rafa. Jehovah Rafa. Jehovah Zidkenu. When you are carrying on, your enemy will discourage you, but he will fail because he doesn't want you to have a breakthrough. But I'm here to tell you what you have been waiting for yes, is coming here today in the name of Jesus. I say it's coming here today. There is power in worship. Tell somebody say there is power in worship. In Matthew 15, verse 22 to 28. Matthew 15, 22 to 28. We see worship here. Taking the attention of Jesus. Worship there took attention, attention of Jesus. If you can see, the Bible says, the woman say, I'm tired of my situation. This could not even affect Jesus. Jesus carry on working. You know, when Jesus is quiet, the disciples will fight you. If you carry on making noise, the disciples When Jesus was quiet, this makes the disciples to be saying, no, we are tired of this lady. She's, she's just making noise. She's, she's, she, she, you see, you are disturbing. Sometimes when you are praying, pray, pray, pray trusting God, worshiping God, because there's no results. To those who don't worship God and understand you, it's a disturbance. So, now, this woman, she began to come and worship him. That's where Jesus spoke now. Jesus came could be taken attention. You can take the attention of Jesus by worshiping. The Bible says she knelt down and worshiped. When she worshiped, Jesus heard what she said and he said, sorry. I'm not sending people like you. And I can't take the food of children given to dogs. Think about when you come here to church and we we'll call you a dog. Automatically you will leave the church and curse. But this lady said, yes, I can still see that there's a bread. But the crumbs that can fall when, the do when, when, when you are eating, when the children are eating, I can get one day. The lady that Jesus kept quiet. The lady that the disciples were tired about. Jesus praised the lady. And said this is a, a, a higher faith. This is a, a big faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes when Jesus is quiet, don't ever think he didn't hear you. He's drawing closer where things will happen when the child is not there, when the problem is not there. Remember, the child was not there. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this. The company you want it to be solved is not here. The company you want to be solved is not here. I mean, somebody who's sick is not here. The problem you want to solve is not here. Jesus can throw you where he can even call you a dog. The way you will be like, I mean, portrayed, it won't be very good in the front of the people. But that doesn't mean that you have been rejected. You are brought to a place where you can solve a problem when you are here and the problem is far away. There are some Christians here by mere worshipping. You can solve a problem of hope when you are sitting here. I don't know if you are hearing me. That's what I said, my friend. There is no distance. There is no barrier. By mere worshipping, you can change the situation that is far away from you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You know, if you look here, Jesus kept quiet Jesus and the humula. disciples were angry. And said so Jesus took this man away. But, but the same, same disciples had Jesus say, this one can do mighty things. If you read Psalm 128, from verse 1 to 4, from verse 1 to 4, this will happen when you worship. Psalm 128. Psalm 128. my friend. Do you want to worship God? Huh? Amen. Amen. Blessed, if you can look there, is everyone who fears, reverse and worship the Lord, who walk in his ways and lives according to his commandments. For you shall eat of the labor of your hands. Happy shall you be and it shall be well with you. Look at verse three. Three. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the innermost parts of your house. Your children shall be like olive plants round about your table. Verse Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who reverently and worship, worshipfully fears the Lord. You know, I'm laughing when I'm reading this verse. By that time, the Bible will be addressing to men. Because usually people used to go to worship, who gather there. Was, was a man who have to worship and go home and teach the children the wife how to worship. Here you can see that worship it can affect the whole house. I mean, if you can read here, you will see that you as a parent can make your children to suffer or your wife or your husband to suffer. If you look at this verse, uh, I don't know why uh, David spoke about this verse 3. He said, your wife or husband or your children shall be like a fruitful vine in the innermost parts of the house. You know, last, uh, last Sunday here, some people that didn't understand me, I said to me this year, I said, please, you must uh, deal with your hairs. Uh, not cheese cop. If you remember. I don't know if you remember that. Yes. This was like a message I'm trying to give you. Because you know cheese cup or, or small hairs tells us you are lazy. <laughs> but I want to teach you so that you understand this. Because as a wife can you hear the Bible says what? You must be like a fruitful vine. When somebody look at you, you must see that there are fruits. Your hairs must be like there's some fruits that will come from your hairs. You don't have hairs. Ah. You don't have hairs. You know, why I say you are lazy? Can I tell you? It's because early in the morning, you don't have time to sit on the mirror and, and check your hairs if they're in order. You just take, you know, <laughs> you just take something like this and 
If you have got small hairs, you are so lazy that you can't deal with yourself. You can't deal with yourself. The wife must sit in the mirror. Deal with Make herself. up. Make this, up. That, red lips, blue lips, blue lips yellow. Blue, yellow, I mean, red. You must be shown your wife. Huh? Hey. You cannot just wake up. <laughs> You clean your head with a vessel up your house. And you wipe your head with your washing rag. You know, it's easy when you don't have a yes. And when you, you, you have got cheese cup, you just take. You can even take a uh, pesa self. You can. Eh? And from there, you can't deal with yourself. You don't even go and look at yourself. In the mirror. So laziness has entered South Africa. You know, the Bible says when somebody entered your house, I mean, the first person they will look is your wife. Yeah, because the Bible says, wife, she's like the, the, the body of a husband. So the way you hold yourself, it means the husband is doing it. If your husband is supporting you, we you see it by wife. The first thing they look is hers. Yes. Yes. yes is the crown of a wife. I'm sure you understand that. So now, people must look at you and say, truly this man is worshipping God. Are you hearing me? When you are coming here with hers there, and then you, your wife is coming there. And we don't need wives who are working like gada 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 like totu. A wife that when she's coming there, she she she's careful where she's putting her legs. And the hairs also. She's putting them in a very nice place. Her hairs are worshipping God. Her feet also are worshipping God. Her dress are worshipping God. When she sits, it's like she's worshipping God. A wife honor. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. If God is blessing you, everybody in the house must change. That's what God wants to do with you. Okay, look at verse 4 there. I'm sure you are going to change everything. Eh? Uh, mama, there is only one thing that I remind her. Even if she didn't forget. When I see her sitting in a mirror, try to do this. When this, I come there, I just say, Where are the earrings? The earrings After you do this, there must be tall. When the wife is doing like this, the earrings say, Glory to God. Glory to God. So everything about you must worship God. Oh, Fela, this one just misses me. It's kind of one of those who remember around that. Are you sure we like that? Right? You have questions at all? Huh? When you are facing there, we must know that one is. How will we let you go? So you want to allow like him meola. Let me give you an example. Come. Eric, if you want to tell. Look at this lady. We have got big brother. Come here. Look, that lady we have got. Come. This lady. Come. You. Sis. Masu. Come. Can you see the hairs there? Come. Le abona meriria sis. If you see the face there. Le belangwa. Yes. Can you see this one? Kintate. Oh, ki papa. This one is the husband. Kim mona. The man. This one is the wire. You can see the hairs here. Can you just wave? Can you just shake your hair like this? All of you, same time. Can you see the hairs are worshiping God? That's what he says. Behold, the hairs are worshiping God. Behold, the hairs are worshiping God. 
Thus shall the man be blessed who reverently and worshipfully fears the Lord. Two says, you shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. Can you see that now? You people must eat. You must do what? Eat. Eat. If you worship God, you must do what? Eat. Stop slimming. Eat. People of God, it. One day you will die. There's no food in the grave. Eat. Worshipping God, the Bible says you will eat the good of the land. There's no good of the land that can make you slim. There's an issue of eating and slimming. You know, today, I want to pray for you so that you'll be able to eat and worship God. I want to eat. Look here, why do you have to earn more money and eat two slices of bread? Why are you suffering yourself like this? Tell anybody, eat. Last time here, I saw one of my relatives did something so strange. When I was growing up, I never saw something like that. There was some wire here. And that she could not open her teeth like that. And the Bible said, open your mouth wide. So that I feel it. That's what the Bible says. So I say, what is happening? She said, I'm fine. I said, okay, what are you eating? She said, tea and juice. Uh, tea and juice. I said, uh, where are you working? How much are you in it? She said, above, above 40,000. 40, above 40,000. 40, I said, share. I said, why now you do like this? Can you see my knees making you so well, suffer? You are not eating. You are, you are destroying yourself. What the, the, the Bible says, open your Bible Bible Bible. Bible. So that I feel it. it. By the time when you wash it, when your mouth is washed, everybody can hear God. Your stomach is full. So you can't open your mouth when you type it. Like she said, no, I want my teeth to be straight. You are, you are very old. You can't do your teeth that way. That's why my friend, when I worship God, he will provide and I will eat. How many of you want to eat? You must worship God. You must, you must worship the living God. Do you want to worship God? Congratulations. God bless you. Keep watching. Charis.